Hi there, welcome to Nappy Invest. Time for another September quarterly report. And in this video, I am going to be focusing on a company called Beam Communications. I was a shareholder of this company until recently. And the reason I sold out was share price went on a bit of a run on fairly low volume. And I saw my opportunity to take some profits. And fortunately for me, the share price has pulled back. But a positive announcement just the other day has seen the share price go on or potentially go on another run. And I hope the share price does pull back a little bit. Anyway, as you can see by the title of this video, Beam Communications was operational cash flow positive by $1.3 million in the September quarter. A very positive report from the company. And I hope for Beam and its shareholders that this sort of financial success can continue for the next few quarters at least. What does Beam Communications do? Well, their vision states to be the world's leading designers and manufacturers of satellite communication equipment. And this is some of the products they do have, for instance, the Iridi Iridium Go, the Thuraya WE, the Imastat Docks, and the Iridium Docks. I'm not interested in those four products. The thing I'm interested about communications is all about Zolio, a global seamless messaging device. This device you can put on your smartphone, take it anywhere in the world and not get lost. They've only started manufacturing this in or last year. It is a joint venture with another Canadian company, not another, but a Canadian company. And this device is gaining traction in the world and the reason why I'm excited about the future of this company. As I mentioned, Zolio is a joint venture between Beam and Roadpost. Uh, that is a Canadian company launched in early 2020 and it is gaining serious traction around the world. So it is the world's first truly seamless global messaging application, extending the reach of smartphones to anywhere on earth. So if you're a serious hiker and you go into the middle of nowhere where there's no uh, coverage, cell phone coverage, that sort of thing, this is the sort of thing you can take with you so you can communicate with anyone in the world. And that's why I believe that Zolio is gaining a lot of traction around the world and why there's a lot of orders for this product. Beam Communications were founded in 2002 as a subsidiary of World Reach, and World Reach actually listed on the ASX in early 2008. And it seems like eventually Beam Communications became the parent company, and World Reach changed the name from that to Beam Communications about four or five years ago. I do remember that. So I do remember um, looking at World Reach, and then all of a sudden I was looking at Beam Communications. The managing director of Beam is Michael Capocci. Uh, he's been with the company since, or Beam Communications since 2003, and been in this role since 2008. He has a 3.3% holding in the company. And one of the other sh largest shareholders is David Stewart. He's a part of the board as well. He has a 12.6% holding. So a lot of skin in the game in the shareholder registry. The market cap of Beam is at 38 million. That's a share price of 44 cents. Now that's not too stretched for a company and it's operational cash flow positive by greater than $1 million in just one quarter. But the question is, can they continue that moving forward? And the TIG code is Brisbane City Council. Whoops, I mean BCC. When we have a look at the receipts history for Beam, which does go back a long way, you'll see that this company hasn't really grown their receipts over time. And that's why I haven't been really excited about this company until they released the Zolio and there were signs that Zolio product was going to be a popular uh, product that this company has designed and is manufacturing. And that's one of the reasons why revenue did jump from $15 million in financial year 20 to $18.5 million in financial year 21 margins. Gross margins did fall from 42% to 30%. That's a little bit of a concern, but the company is operational cash flow positive on a yearly basis, only 900,000, and they are profitable, again, on a low base at 500,000, but they are operational cash flow positive, they are profitable, and that's exactly what you want to see for this type of company. 
with a low valuation. They have $3 million of net cash. Price to sales ratio, not too high at 2.1. And if you do look at the price to operating cash flow and the P ratio, they do look fairly high, but that's because operating cash flow and net profit are on a low base and it wouldn't be surprised to see those two financial metrics triple or quadruple in one year. It doesn't mean they will, but it wouldn't be surprised to see that actually happen. Before we have a look at the most recent September quarter, the whole point of me doing this video, I just want to go back one year in time to just after they released the Zolio product, just to see how they were performing this time last year, and just to compare how they've progressed over the past year. So one year ago, receipts of customers 4.1 million, and they were operational cash flow positive by 152,000. But the only reason they were operational cash flow positive for the September quarter one year ago was they received 352,000 from government grants and tax incentives because of COVID-19. If you take that away, Beam was not operational cash flow positive one year ago. They didn't have a lot of cash. This was a little bit of concern for me. Only $960,000 of cash at the end of the quarter. I would prefer that to be a little bit higher, make the balance sheet a little bit stronger. So that was my one concern about this company one year ago. And cash on hand for Beam did improve. The balance sheet did improve. In fact, by the end of the September 2021 quarter, the cash on hand was $5.1 million. One of the reasons behind that was a capital raising. But business has improved for Beam during the past year. Receipts of customers up to $6.2 million. And we already know that Beam Communications was operational cash flow positive by $1.3 million. And there were no government grants and tax incentives to improve the situation in this quarter. So things are looking like they are going well for Beam Communications. The only thing I have moving forward is whether they can continue this success over the next few quarters. But the only reason I am excited about Beam is how the Zolio product is performing. How many orders are there for this product? And in the left hand side of this slide is a table they provide will be provided in the June quarter appendix 4C showing us how the total orders of Zolio are accelerating. In fact, they climbed the orders to above 20,000 units in the June quarter. On the right hand side is their updated version of the previous table, not quite as good because they didn't provide the cumulative orders, but in the September quarter, the total orders for Zolio had climbed 50% from the previous quarter to above 30,000 units. So again, Zolio is gaining significant traction around the world. And that's why I and the market seems to be getting excited about this company. I've already mentioned that if you do look at the receipts history for Beam Communications since June quarter 2013, when I started collecting information on Beam Communications, and back then they were called World Reach, you notice there is no significant trend in receipts. I do want to see an upwards trend. And in fact, that June quarter in 2013 was a record quarter for this company until the September quarter we just went through, and we did have a record quarter with $6.1 million of receipts. And if we ignore the first six years, of this graph or the table and just focus on the last two years, you'll see there is an upwards trend in receipts. And this is the time period where Beam, through their joint venture, started selling Zolio. And that's the reason why we are starting to see an upwards trend in receipts. The question I have moved forward is, can they continue this upwards trend? Was this a one-off? Was this $6.1 million going to be repeatable? And will we see actually continued record quarters for Beam over the next few quarters? And if we see that and they can remain operational cash flow positive, the future looks very bright for Beam Communications. If we look at the weekly chart for Beam over the past six years, nothing to get too excited about. But there has been a little bit of excitement in this company over the past three months. We have seen a potential breakout in the share price. In fact, 
The share price rose from 25 cents to a high of about 58 cents in a very short period of time. We also saw the, the volume increase a little bit. I would have preferred a little bit higher volume, but we really saw the initial stages of the market getting interested in Beam towards the end of 2020. So this was about six months after they started selling Zolio. Seems like that was around the time the market realized that Zolio was excess. And that's the period of time we saw significant volume come in and a potential breakout in the share price as well. That breakout failed, volume came down um, alongside or along with the share price. So it seemed like that initial hype waned away, but there is a potential that hype is coming back. And one of the reasons why the hype might be coming back is that Beam is operational cash flow positive by a large amount and the market is confident that they can continue this financial success moving forward. If we look at the daily chart for Beam going back to September last year, I wanted to include the period from September 2020 to February 21 because at that point in time it did look like there was potential that Beam's share price was moving into a slowly grinding uptrend. So it was moving up but very slowly and the volume was there as well. I think during that period the market was becoming increasingly confident that the Zolio product was going to be successful. And then that confidence didn't quite wane away, but just the interest in Beam just fell back a little bit. And that's why we saw the share price fall away or move into this sideways consolidation period on low volume until Beam Communications released their September quarter results towards the end of October. And that's the reason why we sell the share price of Beam Communications move from 25 cents to a top of 60 cents in a very short period of time. Sure, we did see the share price pull back from that 60 cents to about 36.5 cents. But over the last few days, we did see an update to how many orders there are for Zolio and the share price did increase from 36 cents to about 44 cents. So about 20% rise in share price based off this new updated Zolio announcement. And I think this um, sort of reinvigorated the interest in Beam and regained the confidence that Beam is moving towards some long-term success. That's all I have for this September quarter report video for Beam Communications. $1.3 million of operational cash flow. A very good quarter for the company and we have seen the market respond quite favorably and the question I have is can they continue this momentum over the next few quarters I think there is some level of confidence there in the market and even myself that this is potentially the inflection point for beam communications but we'll have to wait maybe six to nine more months to confirm whether this is an inflection point. So now could be a good time to take an initial position in this company for the long term. If you have any questions about Beam Communications or any other company on the ASX, please leave your thoughts, your questions, your comments in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, that's it for this video. Have a good day and remember, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.